Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about a somewhat requested topic which is how do I plan to monetize street photography and this YouTube channel? Obviously a very large portion of my income is directly from YouTube. However, you can still make money from street photography by taking photos and that's exactly what we'll talk about later. Also, if my throat keeps going and I seem a little bit slow, it's because I am still recovering from my second COVID jab which yesterday <clears throat> and the day before completely knocked me out. Before going any further, let me just share my current position for anyone who might be new to the channel. So only about a month ago, I quit my full-time job with the goal of focusing on this YouTube channel and on street photography and hopefully in the future travel photography and having that as my main and sort of only source of income. Look, I'm gonna be very real with you. In this day and age, you must have social media. I mean, sure, there are many photographers that have built huge careers without social media, but also I'll bet that they are probably twice my age they have been doing it for 30 years and they have a huge and extensive network of people they know within the industry that can give them work or that can pass their information to other people and word of mouth spreads. For me personally, social media is the main thing that got me to where I am today. If I didn't start posting on Instagram, I wouldn't get absolutely nowhere to be honest. Even all of my traditional freelance work all come from social media, be it me posting on my own page or someone that I took a photo of posting on their page. And even all the subsequent freelance jobs which came from word of mouth, they would never have come if those first clients didn't find me online. Does all of this mean you must have a YouTube channel? Does all of this mean that you must have a huge Instagram? No, but at least having some kind of a presence online, in my opinion, is a must. Like with any stable long-term business, the key is to have multiple small sources of income that all add up to a good income at the end of the month. That way, if two of them fall off the table or the other two, let's say, have a bit of a slow month, you're not shitting yourself because you can't pay your rent. Also, I'm very careful about balancing passive income as well as active income. Now, sure, both have their advantages and disadvantages. Everyone on here bangs on about passive income. And yeah, I mean, if you just want to get the bag, retire, sit by the beach all day and still make money, then passive income is the way forward. However, I still think that having a degree of active income, especially within something that you enjoy doing, will do wonders for your mental health and your physical health. For example, I make passive income with regards to selling digital products. However, my active income is running one-to-one -one workshops and doing freelance work. Running one-to-one -one workshops obviously has its own cap with regards to my time, but I don't do it to make money. Yes, it does make me money, which does help at the end of the month. However, I do it mainly to meet new people and to just interact with other photographers, see where other people are maybe struggling with their photography and help them. And at the end of the day, give something back into the photography community and share things that I have learned. And with regards to freelance work, to, to be honest with you, it's to expand my network and also to challenge myself and do things which normally I wouldn't do. And to be honest, some of my freelance work has actually opened doors for me to go and shoot in places which otherwise I would never get into to get those photos. So I personally think that having a balance of passive and active when it comes to doing something that you enjoy is important. Before going into specifics, let me quickly elaborate on how I've made money so far from my actual street photography. Short answer is tour guides, travel agencies, and events companies. Now, as a street photographer, both me and you have a unique perspective on the city or the town that we live in. If you, let's say, type in London into Instagram, you will have 20 different photos of a bus going past Tower Bridge. I've probably got 10 of them on my hard drive right now. However, a lot of my photos are obviously quite unique in London. And when you, let's say, have 20 different tour agencies all fighting for the same tourists and they all have an Instagram page and let's say 19 of them have the same type of photo of the London Eye or Tower Bridge or whatever, and one of them has very unique and artistic photos of the same city, then people might be a bit more intrigued by that. Now, obviously there are certain limitations. There are definitely headaches that come with doing street photography like this. Um, and mainly that comes from like people's faces, the politics, um, public property, private property, um, like permits, releases, you know, a fair bit of red tape that we need to get around. However, you know, 
I think it's fairly doable. And at the end of the day, in my opinion, if you want to provide a freelance service to an end company using street photography, I think that's probably the best way to do it. Or certainly um, the most profitable way that I see at the moment outside of selling your work as art to go on someone's wall. All right, now let's look at some specific numbers. Now for this particular video, I'm gonna just show you percentages. I will do a deeper breakdown of my YouTube income at the end of the year for this particular whole year, because right now we're only halfway through, so it doesn't really make sense. So let's begin, I'll hold this because I can't remember. So the largest chunk of my income is of course digital products, and that is made up of presets and digital PDF zines. I am working on adding a few more digital products such as guides, but more on that later. Um, and to be honest with you, around 40% of my income is quite acceptable for digital products. Um, I am conscious of not having one specific thing take the majority of my income. Um, so 40% is kind of the max where I'd wanna be. I think if that goes into like 50, 60%, for me, that'll be a bit of an alarm bell and I'll be looking to try and balance that out a little bit more. The second biggest income is 25% from YouTube ads. Coming in in third and fourth place is my freelance income and workshops. To be honest, combining the two, I am happy that they make about a quarter of my total income. And that's exactly how I would want to leave it. Certainly, I wouldn't want like half of my income to be active. And I think a quarter is definitely enough, as I've said earlier, to maintain a healthy working relationship with you know, the YouTube channel making photos, but at the same time, not being completely and utterly reliant on having to wake up and go out and do something to make that money to pay the bills, if that makes sense. At 8%, we have affiliates. So that's Amazon affiliates, Epidemic Sound. To be honest, I don't actively work or concentrate on that. Any percent is good and it's something that just sits in the background and if people find it, and they click on it and they buy something and I get a small kickback, that's absolutely fine. The reason I don't promote it and I will never really promote it that much is because I don't really want to encourage consumerism. And the final 2% is physical products, in my case, prints. That's to be expected because prints generally are not big sellers, at least for many people. Some people make a killing on them, but for me, it's not really being, been extremely successful. To be honest, it's something that I will completely stop as well because I just don't get anything out of it personally with regards to satisfaction. And certainly in terms of the amount of time that I put into it versus the return, it's definitely not worth it. I would rather focus that time and energy and maybe do a few more online one-to-ones, which in my opinion will benefit someone else a lot more. So this can be split into what you'd call YouTube money and making money from actual photography, like an actual photographer, I guess. So let's start with YouTube money. Generally speaking, I don't wanna change anything too much. I think I have a formula and a system that works and provides an overall balanced income, which I am personally happy with. There'll be a few more digital products, specifically a few guides, camera guides, travel guides maybe as well, and photography guides. Um, more on that later though. Also, I am thinking about doing like a Skillshare course. I know many people don't watch Skillshare, but there is like enough people on that platform to maybe having a course worthwhile. I still need to think about it a little bit more. Uh, in terms of YouTube videos, I mean, there's it's completely out of my control how much money is made. I guess my focus is just mainly making videos that you enjoy and you get value from, and then whatever I get out of AdSense, that's just a bonus. In terms of workshops and one-to-ones, that will still remain as a large part of the, uh, let's say, overall business model. I will still take on channel sponsors, but only if they offer actual value to me, to you, and to the channel, and to the photos. Um, I am not going to rely on them as part of my core income, because I personally think that's a very slippery slope to go down. Now, I am still, I am still quite new to YouTube, so maybe someone's been, do, been doing YouTube for like five years, we'll say that's very naive. But in my opinion, when I am relying on a third party to give me money to plug them, and I need that money, that creates a bit of a sticky situation because I don't want to sit here and say, I don't know, go and buy this generic crappy product um, because I'll get a few hundred quid out of it, for example. So 
I will definitely do sponsorships and I will definitely work with brands, but it's only brands which offer real value to everyone involved. Now on to making money from actual photography. To be honest, my goal is to just build on what I've done so far and focus on the travel and tourism sector. 2022, at least for the first half, I still think will be a bit touch and go with the whole COVID thing. But I honestly think that towards the end of 22 and 23 and, and onwards, there will be an absolute huge boom in travel, certainly in the Western world. Many travel companies that, which were broke will hopefully start to get more income and therefore they will need marketing material to promote people to come to their countries, to their towns um, and to spend money in their economy and obviously the best way to do that is through photography and through video and I would would like to position myself in that particular space certainly with regards to a more urban street type of theme so that my work can be used um, as part of a promotion to get people to come into a certain town or a certain country, I guess. In terms of exactly how I'm going to try and do it, I am still yet to work that out. Um, but I do have enough time to get my work to a certain level where I feel it will be uh, attractive to those types of clients. Now, it might work and it might not work. I don't know, but I will certainly give it a go. That is about it, really. Itchy nose. That's about it. So... If you do have any questions, please write it down below. Um, also, let me know if this video was actually useful or interesting to you. I know it wasn't about actual photography, but as I've said, I'll find them interesting. Uh, let me know if you did, because if you say, now this is boring, we're not interested, just do some POVs and talk about how to edit, then I get it. Um, but yeah, let me know either way. That's it. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good week. It's been emotional and I'll see you in a bit. Bye.